Praise God. Well, as you know, I'm going to be talking to you this morning from Romans chapter uh, 12, mm -hmm. uh, verses 1 to 2. And I'm going to talk to you about the title that I've chosen is How to Discover God's Will, or simply Discovering God's Will. Um, in the book of Romans, this is a practical part that deals with our service that deals with how we serve others. Mm -hmm. And so it deals with the basics of Christian living. All right, the first half of Romans deals with the doctrinal part, how to believe, and the second part de deals with how to behave. Okay. All right, and so Paul always starts his books like that. All the books that you see Paul written is doctrine, how do I apply it? In our messages, we pray that that comes over as well. Even what we teach students is always present what God says and then present how it applies to our living Amen. and our daily lives. So, Paul arrives in Romans, at Romans chapter 12, and the first thing he says, Therefore, I urge you. Mm -hmm. One of the principles of Scripture is whatever you see whenever you see a uh, therefore you look for what it's there, it's there for All right. Paul is saying in the light of everything we have talked about now this is the way that you ought to live All right. I believe that Romans 12 and don't get me wrong you all have your favorite verses and your, your favorite uh, quotations but my favorite verse is Romans 12, 1 and 2. All right. Okay? It's the, one of the greatest verses in the Bible. Amen. Paul says, Therefore, on the basis of all that I have taught you and all that have been covered in these first 11 chapters, and remember, chapters were made for us, okay? But all that is before in that 11 chapters, here is how you act. Mm -hmm. The point that he wants to make is that the true test of my beliefs is my behavior. Okay. The true test of my belief is my behavior. Mm -hmm. And so when Paul gets practical, he wants to deal with relationships. That's why I love, I, I, I love this. Because I do believe that Romans is the way that church okay, <laughs> should run. Okay, not church building, church people, church as a congregation. They should run directly out of Romans, and they would see this. So how do I discover God's will for my life? I want us to look at this question this morning and deal with our relationship to God because he said, God's will is good, pleasing, and perfect. Yes. How do you consider God's will for your life? There's no magic formula. You see, God's will is not a formula, and it's not a feeling. Mm -hmm. But there are three very powerful principles that outline what God's will is for your life. Number one, the principle of dedication. He said, therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercies, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, pleasing to God, which is your spiritual worship. In other words, I commit my total life to Christ. The secret to knowing God's will is to be willing to advance to whatever it is, even before you know what it is. Amen. How many people say, God, you show me what your will is, and then after I know your will, I'll decide on if I want to do it or not. I know a lot of people that say that. Okay? God doesn't play games. God is not in this for the game hunting, you know. I'm going to do it, God, if you show me where I go. No. If you want to know God's will, you decide right away that I'm going to do it. His will, whatever it is. Amen. Amen. Here's the attitude that God wants us to have. I'm willing 
to do your will in advance even before I know what it is. So to be totally dedicated to God simply means to say yes to him for my life, your business, your home, and your family. What's the reason for dedication then? I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercies. Mm. Why should I dedicate myself to God? Because of what God has done for me. For me, amen. amen. All of his mercies. Mm. What, are, what are his mercies? Romans 4 to 8 covers in detail what his mercies are. If God has been good to us, surely we ought to give our lives then in return to him. Amen. So the starting point, dedicating our lives to God. There are three characteristics in dedication. Let me just break this down quickly for you. Dedication is voluntary. Okay? Offer your bodies. Mm -hmm. Offer. That's right. Okay? Offer means to voluntarily commit. That's right. Williams translation say make a decisive dedication mm -hmm. of your body. All right. This is the same word for making a reservation for a table in a restaurant. Mm. It means to make a reservation. The table has been set aside for your benefit. Amen. Nobody else can use that table. Put a reservation card on your life. All right. God, my life, my time, my money, myself, completely belongs to you. To you. Amen. Voluntarily. Amen. Number two, it's practical. Offer your bodies. Why would God want to use these sinful, this sinful flesh, this sinful body? God says, give me what you've got. That's right. Give me what you have. Why doesn't God say, offer your soul, Lord? Or your spirit. Mm -hmm. He says bodies. That's right. If God owns your body, he owns us. Amen. Because that's what we see physically. That's right. Have you ever heard someone say, I can't make it to meeting today, but I'll be with you in spirit? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a great sentiment. Yes. yes. <laughs> but it's worthless. That's right. Amen. Okay, your spirit doesn't do anything if your body isn't there. Amen. It's one thing to say that you will give money to missions. It's another thing to dedicate yourself to go on a mission trip. All right, two different things. Two different things. Amen. So, let's get practical this morning. 1 Corinthians 6, 19, to 20 said, 19 and 20 says, Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. That's right. It didn't say your spirit is the temple of the Holy Spirit. It says your body. It houses the Holy, the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Exactly. How do you know if you're dedicated your body to God? When, in, when a need occurs, do you meet it? Mm. When a need occurs, do you meet it? It's complete. Offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. Sacrificial means total unconditional dedication to God. The starting point for knowing God's will is what? Dedication. Amen. Offer your body as a living sacrifice. Usually when we think of sacrifice, we think of something dead. Mm. But this says this morning, hallelujah, living, living sacrifice. sacrifice. There's one problem with the living sacrifice. It can crawl off the altar. Away. That's right. That's why it has got to be what? Offer. A daily, right, daily sacrifice. Daily you get up. Daily you offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. A lot of us come to church and we commit ourselves on Sunday. And then on Monday, we go AWOL. <laughs> it's true. We crawl off the altar. Mm. You know, on Sunday we sing Onward Christian Soldiers. And on Monday, a wall. <laughs> Note it says, holy and pleasing to God. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. In Greek it says, well pleasing to God. Which means it makes God happy when we commit ourselves to, to Him. Yes. Amen. When you do this, it's called spiritual worship. Mm. 
Worship is not something we do only on Sunday mornings. Worship is any time you commit yourself to God. Any time that you make a commitment of your life to Him, you are worshiping. A commitment of your time, praise, dollars, life, talents, energy, that is an act of worship. From the time we started service this morning, we entered into a time of worship in everything we did. Okay, we listened and we heard from God and then we act upon it. Okay, so first principle of delegation, offer yourself totally, commit yourself to God. Number two, it says, do not confirm any longer to the pattern of this world. Mm -hmm. This ties in with dedication. One of the reasons we are not dedicated to the Lord is because we are dedicated to the world. All right. Amen. The point is insulation. Mm -hmm. When he talks about the world here, he's not talking about the people in the world. Okay, he's not talking about individuals. The Bible said God loves the people in the world. Okay? He's talking about the world's values That's system. Right. Don't be caught up in the spirit of the age. What's the spirit of the age? Me first. Mm. Me first. That's the world's philosophy. Mm -hmm. I, I, I. Middle of what? Pride. Pride. Don't be conformed to that. He's talking, he's not talking about things, he's talking about values. Philip said, don't let the world squeeze you That's right, into its mold. Into its mold. Yes. Have you ever felt pressured by the world to come form? Mm -hmm. sure. oh, yeah. That's the way everybody's doing it. Peanuts cartoon says, I can resist any pressure except peer. <laughs> How can a Christian relate to the world why he is living in the world but not of the world? How is that possible? The Christian's relationship to the world is not isolation and it's not imitation, mm -hmm. it's insulation. Most Christians go to one of two extremes when it comes to relating to the, to the world. Some are isolate, some want to isolate themselves. I don't want to have anything to do with the world, therefore I won't go to the movies, I won't watch TV. I won't dress like the world does. I wear a different standard. They may go light, live in a monastery and become a monk. That's not the secret. If we isolate ourselves, how are we going to win the world? That's right. Some Christians imitate the world. Whatever the world does, I'll do it too. I want to fit in, and the Bible says, don't, in, don't, in, don't imitate the world's values. Get all you can, can all you get, set on the can, and spoil the rest. <laughs> if it feels good, in other words, do it. Mm -hmm. Dog eat dog world, that's what that means. Yeah. It's not isolation or imitation. It's insulation. I love seafood. My wife cooks a dish of good seafood. In fact, we're going to do that today. <laughs> the first thing you have to do even before you taste it is to put a little salt on it. Now maybe you don't use salt. That's me, okay? Now you figure that that sea creature, whatever you're going to do, bass or whatever it is, has spent his entire life in seawater. Okay? That fish has spent their entire life in seawater, and when you cook it, you're about to eat it, you have to put salt on it. If God can keep a fish in salt water all its life, and let the salt not permeate its body, can he keep us in a non-Christian world and keep you pure? Oh, hallelujah. Amen. It's called insulation. Yes. Now that comes from a man who don't cook. 
Bless his heart. <laughs> Truth is good for the soul. Okay? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Paul is saying culture is totally unreliable source for <clears throat> getting your guidance in life. Don't be conformed to this world. If everybody else is doing, doing it, must it be okay? No. Most people make their decision on what is acceptable. We like to conform and we don't like to stick out. You're going to get your guidance in life from one of two sources, either the word or the word. If you want to know God's will, don't get your cues from the world. From the, world that's right. the problem today is that many of us automatically accept whatever standard the world is saying, even if God says it's wrong. That's right. Exodus 23, 2 says, don't follow the crowd and do it wrong. Mm -hmm. The majority is not always right. 1 John 2, 17 said, the world and its desires passed away but the person who does the will of God abides forever. Amen. So it's simply logic that most people in the world are not following God's will. Mm -hmm. It's obvious. If you are following what most people are doing, you're not going to follow God's will. You can't discover it by always worrying about what other people think. Amen. And that's what we do sometimes. We worry about what this person is going to think. We worry about what our boss is going to think. But we only got one boss. That's right. Amen. 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 The others Amen. are just supervisors. Supervisors. Come on here, sir. Okay. Mm. So. Supporting actors. <laughs> support right. actors. We're just supporting actors. I like that. Okay. So where do we get our guidance? What do you base your life on? The Bible? How many minutes a week do you spend time in the Bible? Okay. How many minutes a week do you watch television? Where are you getting your values? <laughs> the tube or the boob tube is incredibly influenced on our lives. Yes, it is. What if I call you and say, I'd like to come over to your house. And I like to tell you some stories. I'll tell you them in very graphic detail, juicy stories about adultery, rape, violence. Mm -hmm. And I want you to bring your family in on this conversation, and I'll talk to you about it. Mm -hmm. Would you say yes? Come on over. But we'll watch television. Mm -hmm. And let somebody else, who you don't know, tell you about yeah, it. That's right. I think the world has lost its ability to blush. Mm. There's some things I hear on TV that I just go, what? Thank God I grew up in the 50s and 60s. Amen. Amen. What is your tolerance level? We were talking about it this morning. You got 110 channels. Nothing to watch. <laughs> Nothing to watch. What's your limit? Psychologist says that everything you see goes into your subconscious. Yes. Don't get your cues from the world. The world conforms, said don't be conformed, is the word. And we get a scheme from, you know, in, in English, listen to what it comes out. What, what's the English word? Schizophrenia. Mm. It's literally used for a Greek play actor who would wear a mask, play a part, pick up another mask, play another part. When we conform to the world, we're not genuine. Mm -hmm. We're not real. We're just playing games. It's out of character for a Christian to listen to the world value system. If you want to know God's will, first dedicate. Totally sold out. Second, insulation. You don't imitate or isolate, but you learn how to live in the world without letting it influence you. Number three, transformation. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yes. He's talking about the Holy Spirit 
changing us on the inside so that we will truly know what God's will is for us. The word in Greek is metamorphosis. Yes, change. Okay, God changes us. Mm -hmm. He changes the very nature of our personality. Yes. Psychologists say that your basic personality is set by the time you're age three or four. Oh man, do we ever know it? Mm. Tumbling twos, <laughs> annoying threes, okay, no. <laughs> when you're three or four, you seem to have a character. Mm -hmm. All on your own. Your own little personality. Your own little personality. <laughs> But your personality can be changed. Yes. God is in the business of metamorphosis. All right. Amen. Thank God you do not have to be stuck in your past. Mm. Maybe you had a bad past. Hallelujah. Maybe you were mistreated. Maybe you had a lot of bad experiences in life. But God says, I can do a metamorphosis. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If I can change a lowly caterpillar into yes. a butterfly, you can be free. Yes, amen. You can fly. Mm -hmm. So, the cocoon in our lives has got to go. Mm. What are this cocoon? Old ways, old habits, old patterns. The Bible said, do not be conformed anymore. First John 3, 2 said, dear friends, now we are children of God and what, we, what will be has not yet been known. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Amen. Scripture said one day, mm -hmm. when you see Jesus perfectly, yes. when he returns or when you go with him into heaven, you're going to be instantly changed Change. to be just oh like him. My. Total metamorphosis. Hallelujah. In the meantime, 2 Corinthians 3.18 said, and we who with unveiled faces yes. all reflect the Lord's glory are being transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory yes. which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. Hallelujah. We're being changed to be like Christ more yes. and more on a daily basis. Daily. The more that we read his word, mm. the more that we become like him. On veil faces. Remember Moses went up to the mountain yes. to get the Ten Commandments and God let him get a glimpse mm. of him. And when he came down from the, from the mountain, his face was shining so bright that they couldn't even look upon him. Mm. Why? Because he had seen God. Mm. God will see us as was prayed this morning. God will see us as light and vessels when we have that relationship with Hallelujah. him on an ongoing basis. Yes. Thank you, Lord. The only thing is, after a while, that glory faded mm. in Moses' situation. <clears throat> and Moses didn't want the people to know it was gone. So he kept wearing the veil. The veil. My God. Paul says we don't wear a veil, but we reflect His glory. God's glory. Amen. The word reflect, that's the only time that the word is used in the New Testament. It, li it literally means to contemplate, to look at. The more I look at God, the more I look at Jesus Christ, the more I'm changed to be like him. That's right. So I don't look at my pastors. I don't look at my bishop. I don't look at the deacon. I don't look at the elder. I don't look at the minister. I don't look at the sister or brother. Mm -hmm. I look at Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Amen. So how do I look at the Lord? Through the Bible. That's right. As I look at Christ through his book, as I read more and more about him, I am changed and I become more and more like him. I am transformed. Romans 12, first step, dedication. Mm -hmm. Commit yourself totally. Second, insulation. Separate yourself from the world values. Not physically, spiritually. Yes. Then transformation. That takes place by the renewing of what we got up here. Mm -hmm. 
The key to changing our life, my friend, is to change the way we think. That's right. The scripture teaches that the way we think determines the way we feel, and the way we feel determines the way we act. If I'm acting depressed, it's because I'm feeling depressed, and I'm feeling depressed, depressed because I'm thinking depressed thoughts. Most people try to change themselves by changing the way they feel or the way they act. Rather than going to the source Amen. and change the way they think. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You cannot change the way you feel. Feelings do, don't do well to command. <laughs> you can't command a feeling. I command you feeling, come in line. <laughs> feelings can't be controlled. That's right. But the source of feelings can. That's right. Amen. And that is how you think. Here's an example. You have a habit you want to change in your life. Imagine your boat in a lake, and the boat is, is head and ease. In the boat, there's an automatic pilot, and it's determining the direction of the boat. Remember, it's saying, go east. Mm -hmm. If you want the boat to go west, there are two ways you can turn it around. One way, grab a hold of the steering wheel and by sheer willpower force, turn it around. Force it to go in the other direction. You're holding on to the steering wheel, forcing the boat to go west. While all the time the automatic pilot still says, go east. It's the same principle of trying to change your life through willpower. Mm. You force yourself to turn around. The whole time you're holding on to the wheel while your natural inclination is the other direction. So what happens? You're under stress now. You're under tension. Because one says go east, but you want to go west. Trying to change through willpower creates tension. Soon you get tired of holding on to the steering wheel and eventually you let go. <coughs> and you go back to your old ways because that you were trying to change. That's right. You don't change yourself simply by willpower. Mm -hmm. The better way is to simply change the automatic pilot. Mm. You know, many of us got this license on the, you know, God is the co-pilot. Why don't you let him be the pilot and you be the co-pilot? All right. There's a lot better that way. It's a lot better that way. Okay, so that sign for me doesn't exist on my, on my vehicle anyway. You know, I, I saw a guy the other day. God is my co-pilot. Really? That's the problem. Amen. <laughs> okay, so... If I simply change the automatic pilot, the breeze, it's a breeze to turn the boat around. Okay, so I'm not going to be forcing it. It's not my willpower because I've gone to the source. Let me ask you this question this morning. What is the automatic pilot in your life? Complete the sentence. It's just like me to be. You complete the sentence. It is just like me to be. Complete the sentence 10 times, mm -hmm. and I can tell you what your automatic pilot is. Wow. It's the way you see yourself. Mm -hmm. All through scripture, the Bible tells us, be transformed by the what? Renewing, Renewing of your mind. All change starts in your thought life. That's right. Scripture said, as a man thinks yes. in his heart, so is he. So is he. <laughs> Ephesians talks about putting on the new mind. The question is, how do I remove? How do I renew? How do I renew my mind? Slow down. <laughs> Psalms 119, verse 9 said, How can a, man, a young man keep his ways pure? Mm. By what? Living according to your word. Yes. I seek you with all my heart. 
Don't let me ever stray, Lord, from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Yes. The way you change your life is to reprogram your mind with the word of God. Amen. The more you fill your life and your mind with God's word, the more transformation comes into your life. Amen. You can take the word of God and the word, de and the word deals with any major problem that you can experience. Find the scripture, claim the promises of God, yes. and be transformed by the Amen. renewing of your mind. Amen. Amen. So Romans 12 said, the secret of changing my life is to change my thought. Yes. Be transformed by the renewing of my mind. You renew your mind how? Through God's word. That's it. Amen. That's it. It's only one way, folks. That's it. You can't avoid doing it without God's word. You see, number one, God's will is found in God's word. Most of God's will has already been revealed, folks. That's it. Nothing, new. Nothing new. We read his word, he speaks to us. David Allen said, when you open your Bible, God opens his mouth. That's right. When you shut your Bible, God shuts his mouth. There you go. Motto of a Detroit Bible College, years gone by, discovering the will of God by studying the word of God. That's it. Through the principles and commands and examples of scripture, we discover his will. Number two, God's will, God's will never contradicts God's word. There you go. People say that I have an impression. What, did you have an old pizza last night? Is your stomach, are you following your feelings? You got up this morning and your stomach won't feel good, so your mind is out of whack, it's because of the pizza that you had last night. All right. Okay? But my first reaction is, with your impression, what does the Bible say about yes. that impression? You see, that's how false ideas and false religions get started. Mm -hmm. Somebody gets an impression. Galatians 1 8 says, even if an angel comes and tells you some new revelation, mm -hmm. Come on. and it's contrary to what's in the Bible, yep. Yep. said don't accept it. Don't. You can find that in Galatians 1.8. That's right. Because it's not God's will. Mm -hmm. A lot of people said, I feel this is God's will for my wife. Mm -mm. The moment you said, I feel this is God's will for life, I'm going to tell you, nope. nope. It's not God's will. Because you're feeling. <laughs> what does it say in the world? Well, okay. It, you know, the Bible takes the exact opposite. But I feel it is right. And look at the circumstances, how they all work out. But it couldn't be right because God will, will never contradict his word. his word. The reason why a lot of Christians are confused about God's will is they don't know his word. There you go. So why should I discover God's will for my life? It says, then you will be able to test mm -hmm. and approve what God's will is. There you go. Three things that I'm done this morning. Number one, God's word is good. That means high quality. God's plan is for us to have a good life. Jeremiah 29, 11 said, I know the plans I have for you. Plans of good and not for evil. Plans to give you a future and a hope. God's will is exciting and it's stimulating. And you can greet it with positive expectancy. Number two, it's pleasing and acceptable. A lot of people don't read the word of God because they think God is too harsh. God's word or God's will is unpleasing. I will have to give up this, and I would have to give up my fun. You have no, more, you have more fun in God's will than you can ever develop on Amen. your own. Amen? Amen. Amen. So how can I know God's will for us? I figured out what I want to do, and then I figured that God's will is the exact opposite. Mm. I was never a happy camper until I got involved in ministry. I can do this and I can do that and I can do this and I can do that and I liked it, I enjoyed it, yeah, but when I got involved in ministry, 
You know, somebody told me, well, you're not going to make a lot of living doing ministry. And I said, no problem. As long as I'm committed to do God's will. Amen. I've never been hungry once. Amen. <laughs> okay. Take care of the bank. Whatever I've had, praise God, I've never been without. Because if I go without one time, I know one of you will step forward and say, Excuse me, what are you walking around here with pride? Mm -hmm. If you're supposed to, we supposed to be helping you and you can't come out and tell us? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, instead of standing up and getting spanked in front of you, I tell you. <laughs> So if Mel is not around, you know I can't cook, guess what? I don't have to tell you. Or I go knocking on Amory's door. And Amory said, well, what do you want me to do? She don't cook. She <laughs> That's the wrong door to knock on. Yeah, go see Lizzie. Yeah, that's what she would say to me. Go see Lizzie. Go, go see Sissy. Go see Lizzie. Yeah, I know. Wrong door to knock on. I put you on blast. <laughs> Real cheap. Yeah, you can make me a good beer. Uh, yes, you do. Shepherd's pie. You you make the best. You make the best grilled cheese. Amen. God isn't a Scrooge who sees you're having a good time and stops you. That's right. His will is pleasing. It's enjoyable. You will never be any happier than you are being at the center Amen. of God's will. Final. Number three, it's perfect, complete. God's will is the best, folks. Literally, what this means is that God's plan for our life is tailor-made. Yes. That means whatever you are going through, God has developed it for you to go through so that you can get rid of some of that humiliation and pride yes. and have some humility yes, and be humble. Amen. It's custom fit. Mm -hmm. Yes. Just, Just for you. you. Just for you. Amen. One of the things that getting into the center of God's will will do, does, it releases you from comparing yourself to somebody else. That's why he says, don't follow the ways of the world, because how can you follow what everybody else is doing when God's will is telling me just for you? Amen. If you're doing what everybody else is doing, it's not tailor-made. That's right. You'll have this inner peace. You'll have a calmness because it's good and it's right and it's fitting just for you. Relax. It makes life simple. Nothing can improve on God's will for your life. See how simple it is? That's what teachers, that's what scripture teaches us about God's will. There isn't some long drawn out principle, big recipe. You do three things. Come to God. I don't understand what you want to do with my life, but regardless of what it is, mm -hmm. I want to do what you want what me you to want. do. That's right. I commit myself to you in advance. Wholesale, total dedication. Then you say, Lord, I'm not going to take my cues from what people say or from the standards of this word from TV, People Magazine, says in and out this year. I want to tune into what you have to say. Have you ever noticed? This is February, right? How many people broke their promises and their whatever at the beginning <laughs> or the second right day one? I plan to do this every day of the year. Day two comes. Memory loss. Father, renew your mind. He said, fill your mind with God's word. And as you do, your mind is transformed. God wants you to grow to the place your life in your life where you can make decisions just like Jesus would without him having to knock on your head and send a telegram every time. Wake up, son. Wake up, daughter. You're going the wrong way. You're going on the wrong way. All of a sudden, you realize, how did I get here? How did I get onto this juniper tree? 
Well, because why? I did not allow God's word. You made the decision because you know the principles of God's word. Knowing the principles of God's word is reading it. Studying it. Don't just read it. Allow the Holy Spirit to bring it. And he will show you. What is it there for? Mm -hmm. Go a couple of verses up mm -hmm. and a couple of verses after. Mm -hmm. yeah. You will find out exactly what God is saying. Amen. God bless you this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.